Friday Night Live, we're going to work on some skills to make me help you guys learn better. Okay? So we saw the, the video. I thought it was a, kind of a cool video if you guys really look at it. Let's look at all of our things. It's not as a failure. So, like, sometimes we get on ourselves, man, I, I knew I knew how to do this. I knew how to do this well. Well, what really it comes down to, though, is, is that in your welding career, you guys are going to have to take lots of tests. You guys are going to have to be able to not only spit out code books or things like that, you guys are also going to have to be performing weld tests. So, what I did, first thing I did was, I printed out you guys, Cornell note-taking method. Has anybody ever heard of this before? Okay, well, quick uh, explanation. This was made by a guy who taught in the Department of Education at Cornell University. And they have a lot of interesting stuff. They even have actually a little uh, canvas if you guys wanted to go through it. It's a canvas on note-taking. If you guys are curious, and I can put it up for you guys. So what it is, is, is that you get your piece of paper, and you break your paper up into three different sections. Okay? The right side is whatever you're hearing in a lecture, in a movie, that you've read, or even like online content. Okay? So maybe I have a, a PowerPoint slide or something like that, okay? So this is where I'm going to put most of the information that I have. I'm going to make all my little drawings here, do, 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 okay? It explains whatever we're talking about, right? Well, here, I'm going to, they say it's called the Q, but what I really look at is key terms and stuff I might not need to remember, ideas to remember. Okay, I use this a lot, so maybe if somebody's saying, okay, rule number one. And then, I'm gonna write rule number one over here. Okay, so that it allows me, so when I wanna study, I can fold this over and say what is rule number one, or da 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 is rule number one. So you can use it also as a study aid. The bottom here, they use to summarize. Whatever I have just watched, what I've you know, just read, whatever it is, summarize it in a couple of sentences. What does that do for you guys? What can that do for us? Uh, just remember what we learned during that video. Right, okay, remember what you learned, but also makes you kind of think about what did I really learn, okay? Now for me, I take this piece and I actually move it up here because I have a habit of keeping my notes. And if I'm going through a notebook, I might be going through like this and I might be looking for a particular day or something that was said so that I could kind of jog my memory. So I tend to move that summarization up there, okay? But there's also another thing. So after I'm done, after I've taken my notes, what do you guys do with your notes? I know where mine are, the bottom of a bag. Okay, it happens. We shove it somewhere. We... What the use is using notes if you're not gonna do anything with it? Okay, so what they say, maybe when you get home, five, 10 minutes after we've taught, whatever it is, to go back to your notes and clarify. Make in a little notes. And remember, you guys can do this on your phone, you can do this on your computer, or you can write it on a piece of paper. But clarify some of the thoughts here. You know, I was doing this while I was watching something or reading something, and I was jotting down what I wanted, and I wanna come back and make clarification. Okay, make sure you know, like, when I come back to that note tomorrow, the next day, or before my test, I know what I was talking about. Because let me tell you, I have doctor notes. Well, what, what is PR? Oh, never mind. You know, you don't, you can't remember what you were thinking at that moment. So you guys need to make sure that after you've done something like that, come back.
clarify all of your stuff so you remember what it's about. Okay? Yes. Okay? Notes. Really, really super important. Okay? And I think it'll help you guys also remember a little bit more when you kind of do something like this, especially when you guys are struggling for, on some of the tests. Okay? And I also put some stuff in here for test anxiety. Here's the thing. When we are welders, we're kind of put to the test, not just that day, but the day for our interview. When they say, hey, do you know how to weld? And you say, yeah, let me show you, right? You, you're put on the spot and that's a test. And for some people, including myself, you get a little, right? Okay, and so some people, they just go, okay? Here's the thing. You need to yell in your brain, okay, I'm done, stop. Why am I worrying about this? I either know it or don't, right? And I'm teaching you guys to have muscle memory. So once you step up to the plate, you already know where to swing. You guys will already feel that, know what it feels like to do it, no problem, okay? So you kind of have to just, you know, push the anxiety away, okay? Other one is, you know, daydream. But when we daydream, dream about making that perfect weld because that, to for us to visualize becomes very powerful. So know that we're gonna be doing the right things when we're making that weld. This goes not only for tests, but when we practice. Practice imagining that I have this great weld that needs to be there. Okay? And we want to totally focus on what we're doing. If you guys pay close attention, really close attention, and I'll let you know, I, I practice that a lot, you're gonna notice the puddle. And you're gonna, and the way the art comes down, and then the puddle fills up, and how you're moving it. And being very, very specific and detailed oriented, and that way you know exactly what you wanna do. Okay? And it's important. And also, guys, don't cut yourself down. When we have a failure, well, let me tell you, I've had quite a few of those. We tend to say, I'm the worst, I don't know how to do this, I'm done, right? I don't know how to do this yet. I need to practice a little bit more here. Being constructive versus critical of yourselves is going to help a little bit more, you know? And I don't truly believe anybody has a bad weld when they try, right? You've put your focus, your attention, and you're creating a skill. You know, like, hey, when you were five, do you know how to tie your shoes? 90% of the time, what'd you do? <sighs> I don't know how to do this, I can't do this, uh, right? It was a big deal. You got it, eventually. So we, ha we can't be the kid, you know, throwing a tantrum because it didn't come to us the first time we did it, right? That, oh, hey, this is something I've never done before and it's not something I know how to do. Important to remember, don't be critical of yourself. Be critical of the weld. Well, what did I do here that didn't go the way I wanted it to go? And pick apart the weld. So that way the next time, you can make those changes so that it can be better, okay? All right, so I got a couple of other ones. Test taking. <laughs> Multiple choice tests. I think you guys, I think you guys really, really needed this one. Okay, multiple choice tests. Okay, so there are specific strategies when we look at multiple choice tests. Don't tell me, oh, just pick C, right? That, didn't they always say that in school? Always oh, just pick C. Okay, so here it is. It says qualifiers. These are words that alter a statement. Always, most, equal, or good and bad, okay? In a multiple choice test, qualifiers can make an option on a test to be correct or incorrect. So what the example is, is that it always rains in Seattle. Hmm. Or is it often rains in Seattle? Okay, well, it often rains in Seattle would be correct. 
because the word always in the second statement, it's false, right? It doesn't always rain. It might snow. Okay? We have to make sure that we're paying attention to those, those qualifier words, okay? So you need to pay attention to them, you know? And so they have these words, all, most, some, none. And when you, they group them together. So when one qualifier is used, substitute the others in it. And that way you'll kind of get the right idea. Oh, okay. It goes, it goes kind of back and forth and opposite. So I thought that was kind of helpful. Okay. Negatives. Notice the negatives on there. If there's words like no, not, none, never, or prefixes like ill, like an illogical or un, uninterested, and im, like impatient. Negatives can reverse the meaning of a sentence. So in this answer, the prefix in, an indistinguishable, causes the statement to be false. Because it is at liquid te uh, room temperature, mercury is indistinguishable from other metals. So it changes, it changed the whole sentence, didn't it? Okay, each negative reverses the meaning of the sentences. With two negatives, the question's meaning should be the same as it was without, right? So, for example, the first statement below has no negatives, it's true. The second statement has two negatives. Since each negative reverses the meaning, it also is true, but it's harder to see true. Okay, so when they say, it, it is illog or logical to assume that Thomas Edison's fame was due to his many practical inventions. It is illog illogical to assume that Thomas Edison's fame was not due to his many practical inventions. Right? Both of them pretty much say the same thing, except it's how the words are twisted, right? So you guys need to be able to pick out those words. The other one is, pick the best response. How do you know? Reread it, okay? Options in a multiple choice class have some truth, right? You want to identify the best one from the good responses, okay? If you tried, you know, other options and narrowed it down to two and both seem Try to pick the option that someone just looks better, right? Feels better. But we also want to look at the question. What are we asking here? If there's grammatical clues, this is a good one. Although questions follow different format, they also follow grammar. So you can eliminate questions or answers to questions that just grammatically don't make sense. Because when we're writing a test as an instructor, I'm going to, I think to myself, I'm making this sentence true, right? Or I'm making this sentence false. When we do that, well, I'm thinking grammatically correct. So you also need to make sure that you're looking at these answers grammatically. Um, things with... Uh, so when we look at this, like, this is a country located just outside the Arctic. It doesn't have a verb in there, you know? So some of them, they kind of make sense at when we start to look at them, but we need to be very careful because sometimes our brain inserts words in there so it makes sense. So look really, really closely. Mark, this is, the, this is a good one. Sure things first, and you want to make three passes, okay? So go through the test and answer all the questions that come really easy, okay? For the questions that are difficult, mark the qualifiers, the negatives, and eliminate, okay? This will give you a head start for the last one, okay? You come across another question gives you a clue to be stumped. On your second pass, you come around and figure out the best answer for it. So it's kind of like uh, answering everything that you can right away because it gives you something versus nothing, right? Um, I, if I'm number one, I'm stuck on, I, I don't know the answer, what am I gonna do? Am I gonna try to work on this question for 15 minutes or do I go to the next one, right? Go to the next one and we just keep going and then we can come back to something that's more difficult and if it's a multiple 
a multiple guess, you know, we can make a better guess because maybe something in the reading that we've read also will help us identify it. Okay. And then I'm not going to go through all of these other exam ones, but there's a couple of ones on multiple choice. Read the stem. Make sure you understand what it's getting to. What is the question asking me? Look for double negatives or twists in the words before you consider. Come up with the correct answer before you see the choices. Okay? Try to come up with it and it'll help you rule out choices that are really similar to something that's not correct. Look for clues. Hmm. Rule out, you know, example, if the stem indicates the answer is plural, I'm going to look for a plural answer, right? Or a singular answer, because that will help you, okay? I notice sometimes in a lot of on the tests that I've seen, it makes a difference. Look at it grammatically. Oh, this was the one that I really liked. Decoding different types of test questions. Um, Different tests require you to come up with kind of a different answer, right? So there's one, they say green light. It's going to fall into one, one of three color, green, yellow, or red. Go right ahead. These are factual questions, and the answers are usually based in fact. You either know it or you don't, right? And so sometimes these can be difficult because you need to be able to recall something very specific, like a measurement, okay, or an amperage or a voltage. The yellow questions mean slow down. These are detailed questions, uh, but they're more detailed than the green light questions. You either know the answer or don't, but there's a lot more detail here, okay? So you may have to slow down and look at a different strategy to answering this because it's a little bit more detailed. The red light, hold on. These questions will make you apply your knowledge, something they call mm, critical thinking. So you might need to understand the material being used. You may need to be able to use your own logic to say, well, if this is this and I understand this, to be able to pull that information and figure it out, okay? I like to give you guys that information like that when you're doing your daily assignments. Because as a welder, you're going to have a question and you need to know where to find it. Well, sometimes we, you know, nobody has all the answers, right? So you guys have to be able to go to a code book or a different resource to be able to find the information you're looking for. So it's really important for you guys to be able to think, okay, well, if this code says this, well, this is probably pretty close to what I'm having to go for, right? So I want you guys to be able to use those skills and look at it in the right way. Okay. Reading. I know you. some of you guys kind of struggle with understanding the material that you guys read. Some of them are, you know, you, just for you to be able to look at it, give questions to what you're looking at, read it again, put it in your own words and be able to review it, okay? So that's what a lot of it is, but it gives you some, some good stuff for you guys to understand a little bit better. Now, this is what I really wanted to get to. Please like and subscribe. Stay tuned for another part. Weld the world. World, world premiere. premiere. Feel alright.